record. <clears throat> now I see it. Should have it now. Okay, cool. Uh, my name is Jay Franklin. I'm sorry for the delayed entry. We just wanted to make sure that we gave folks uh, some additional time to join us this evening for this presentation. Um, my name, Jay Franklin. My pronouns are he, him, his. Uh, Associate Director, New Student Family Programs. I've been uh, with Cal State San Marcos for far too long. Uh, I'm a product of the university. I got my undergrad and my master's degree from Cal State San Marcos. I left uh, the university for about a year and a half to work for a for-profit institution and was recruited to come back to Cal State San Marcos in 2009. And I've been here ever since. The majority of uh, my experience has been with extended learning, the self-support revenue generating uh, department of the university. And this evening's topic is Cougar Care Network and Helpful Resources and Student Health and Counseling Services. And given that I'm not the subject matter expert in this area, I'd like to introduce you to Donna Davis and Katie Ramos. But take it away, Donna. Thank you. Hi, everybody. And thank you for being here. Thank you for being caring families who are looking for resources and ideas to help your students. Um, so I am the, the proud director of the Cougar Care Network, a wonderful uh, organization here that um, gets to care for your children um, in a nice, kind way. So let's kick it off and tell you what we do. Um, Jay, are you advancing the slides for me or am I doing that? I gotcha. Okay, thank you. Appreciate your help. So we are part of the Dean of Students Office. As um, Jay mentioned, he's from New Student and Family Programs. We are sandwiched in between that, if you will, um, along with student conduct and ethical development. So we get to um, help students in general, but we also see students when they might get themselves into some type of trouble here. We work closely with conduct and ethical development. So for example, if a student has been caught cheating on an exam or does something else here that might bring them in touch with conduct, we often um, refer back and forth because we know if somebody is in trouble, that generally is because they have other things going on in their life. So that's kind of a nice connection that we have with that office so that we just don't assume that they're, they should be in trouble and be punished for it. We kind of discuss and see what's going on to see if they can learn from the experience and, um, and move forward. So that's kind of a, a nice way of the Dean of Students Office operating. Um, the next slide, please. Thank you. So this is what Cougar Care does. We are able to connect students to resources. We help advocate for them with their professors and others here. And we provide support in general for personal, academic, financial, or other challenges they might have um, that's interfering with their classes or their um, their goals, personal goals, and their college experience in general. Last year, we had over 3,000 referrals come in. So you can tell we are a busy office. Um, the easy way for students to find us to remind them that we are located right below Panda Express in the student union. And that's where most students will know um, they visit Panda quite often. On Tuesdays, we have Popcorn Tuesdays from 11 to 4, which most students also informally like to come into our office. So if one of your children are shy, and they need help kind of coming into our office and checking it out. We encourage them to visit on Popcorn Tuesday sometimes because that's an easy way to come in, grab some popcorn, and then say, oh, is somebody from Cougar Care here? And there's lots of us on call that day, certainly to help out. Um, and we can go to the next slide, please. And they don't just have to come in on Tuesdays, so make sure of that, but sometimes that's the easy way. So we help from with all of these types of concerns from uh, housing concerns that might come up and that could be um, that they um, lose their housing um, and that they need to, or that they're having roommate issues. Um, we help if they're um, food insecure, if they've lost a job or they need help seeking a job, we also help connect them with that, with the Career Center here. With transportation issues, sometimes we are able to provide ideas um, and general financial emergencies. We connect them with um, emergency funds that we have. In general, we help with basic mental health concerns. Um, we are not a clinical office. That's where my friend Katie comes in, in her office. But we help in general for some things that students want to toss about. Maybe they have a little bit of anxiety, for example, but they don't feel the need to see a therapist or a counselor or a doctor right away, that they want to toss it around and get some ideas in general. So that's something that we um, are able to start and have a conversation with. Most students will, will say that they just kind of want to talk something through and they come to our office to do so and that helps them. And that's a great start. But when they do that, we also remind them that, you know, we're here in the future for them, or if they do need that resource or connection, 
transition, for example, to student health and counseling, we can help them do that um, you know, in the future should they need it. Uh, we help with general academic concerns. So if students are missing classes, having trouble getting out of bed, getting adjusted, they're behind in their work, or they have some type of, of concern with their professor, um, we can help with that. Sometimes they don't know how to talk to their professors or advocate. Um, and so we give them the strength to do that and give them abilities to chat through scenarios. Um, we also help them if they have trouble finding an internet um, hotspot. Um, some places I know that their internet can be a little bit spotty or costly. So we help connect them with a free resource for that and also provide laptop loaners, not through our office, but through our partnership with IITS um, here on campus, the technology office. So all sorts of things are available that people had no idea um, sometimes. And so it's nice to remind folks about these. Um, and we also help with personal and family concerns, uh, whether it's a family crisis that's going on, whether it's the death of a loved one, uh, relationship concerns that they might have uh, here on campus or significant life changes in other ways. So all sorts of things. Basically, if you don't know, um, if we do it, come ask us and we'll be able to chat. Uh, through scenarios or know someone who can connect them to the help that they need. And we can go to the next slide, please. This is a program that we currently have that not everybody knows about. If you are not um, uh, living in housing with a meal plan, so, so plenty of students live in housing and don't have a meal plan because they have kitchens, you would be eligible for this program. But if you do have a meal plan, you would not be eligible for this program until your meal plan ran out of funds, for example, if you had a, a limited meal plan that only gives you so many meals. Um, but for those that do not have a meal plan, we have uh, a offer up to 10 free meals on campus and some um, students could really use this as a supplement to kind of help them get back on track. Um, a lot of them don't have the funds to afford the meals, and this can be a supplemental way to do it or a way to take a night off from cooking, um, which is sometimes overwhelming for them with their busy lives. So it is free. It takes no more than two minutes to apply. Feel free to take a photo of that QR code that's on the screen and uh, your student could fill it out. Again, it takes less than two minutes, basically their name and ID and a few questions. And so if that can help any of your um, children, please uh, feel free to uh, pass that on. The next screen, please. And these are the most popular resources that we connect students with. I think I've already mentioned a few of them. Swipe Out Hunger was the one I just showed you. The Cougar Pantry, where we offer students can go once a week on campus and get um, just visit the, the Cougar Pantry with their own little grocery cart and get free food. Uh, so again, that's a once a week program. There's also fridges on campus where students can stop by now that have snacks um, that they can get, such as apples or pears. Um, those are always free on campus, and that's something that just started this year. We're really proud of our partnership with ASI um, and the fact that they're offering that for students. Our friends at the Student Health and Counseling Center, of course, is another popular resource. PASS is an office that helps students with time management, uh, general academic skills, note-taking, how to kind of get themselves on track here. And some students could really benefit from that, especially the time management. They're lovely. And we uh, remind students about tutoring. The Student Emergency Fund and the Health Assistance Fund are two funds where students can get perhaps up to $350 for one or maybe up to $500 for the other for emergencies that are keeping them from um, attending their classes or um, for, I think Katie might en end up mentioning the health one, I'm not sure if she will, but that one can help for like, for example, reimbursement for glasses um, or some other um, health need that they may have. Uh, a lot of students will use that for dental needs and so forth. So these are funds that are possible for uh, emergencies and, um, you know, or if they don't have enough funds to pay for them. Uh, so CalFresh is an, another thing we connect students with, with free groceries, and we have a connection through ASI to help with that. Uh, housing insecurity aid also, we have emergency housing on campus that um, if there's spots available and it's a true um, emergency where students have no place else to go, we have that ability for them uh, here. And we have a relationship with the Career Center uh, to help students with jobs. And like we mentioned already with IITS, which is our technology uh, department on campus that provides laptops and other help with technology needs. So all of these things, and if students don't know about them, that's what we're here for to connect them with. Next one, please. 
And so here is how to get in touch with us. Again, feel free to take a photo of this QR code. Students can refer themselves and this uh, QR code will bring them to that. Uh, professors, families, uh, staff, students, other fellow students can refer also. That's the second referral form that's also on our main webpage. So either your child could refer themselves or if you had a concern, we have had parents from time to time um, or other family members refer a student for some concerns to have us check up on them and see how they're doing. Um, and then also on our website that we're really proud of, there's um, well over 200 resources that we added this year for students and family members who want to search themselves and perhaps don't want to speak to somebody about concerns, but they can go through our resources and they can find all sorts of things that can be very helpful for them for local community resources, such as additional food pantries, or uh, perhaps they want a, a person to talk to in the middle of the night to help them through a particular problem. There are hotlines there for that. Uh, so there's lots of information there that can be very useful and we encourage y'all to check it out through that QR code. Um, and next slide, please. And lastly, this is our Instagram page. At the top, there is a QR code there. Um, we want and suggest that you might consider it because this way you remember us. Um, sometimes you'd be like, what was that office I want to send my daughter to or my son? What was the name of that place? So sometimes this can be a helpful way. And the uh, post that we have certainly won't hurt you. Uh, they're usually inspirational, a little bit of self-care, and they're a little bit of recipes or a little bit of fun. Um, so we have, a, a it's a nice page to follow and we don't, um, uh, bother you too often, but it's a nice way to get connected to us um, and stay connected just in case you need us. And you also certainly could message through that as another means too. And as I said, and want to be uh, remind you of, students can walk into our office too. They don't have to worry about a referral form if that's too much. They can always walk in, they can call, they can email. So there's all different ways. Um, depending on your child, you might know what might, way might be best. Um, and that's about all from Cougar Care. And I know Katie has a presentation and then we can chat further. Thanks, Donna. Thank you. Let me get Katie's presentation. Katie, this is all you. Student right. Health and Counseling Services. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here and in, in support of Jay and Donna to help let you all know all the supportive services that our campus has. Um, my name is Katie Ramos. My pronouns are she, her, hers. I am a licensed clinical social worker. Um, and I too, along with Jay, am a two-time grad alum from Cal State San Marcos. I got my undergrad and uh, my master's in social work from here. So super happy to be back. Did the community small nonprofit work for many years and I have, uh, been here for a little over three years. So super excited. Love this campus. Love our students so much. All right, Jay, you want to click me through? So before we begin, um, some of the slides that we'll talk about will mention difficult topics such as mental health challenges that our students may face. And so the purpose for you here tonight is to have the information about the resources that can help you and your loved ones and how they can be successful here at CSUSM and beyond when they leave. Um, if you feel uncomfortable at any time, please feel free to just take a break. You can mute me. Uh, you can come back later. Uh, Jay is recording this, so I'm sure that will be made available for you all at a later time. All right, so if you haven't yet been to our campus, this is just a, a picture of our center. We have a pretty large center. There's um, a medical side, our hope and wellness, which I'll talk about later, and then our counseling services are all housed under the same umbrella of student health and counseling as an integrated um, system. Go ahead, Jay. So student health and counseling offers free and confidential services. Um, our services are already built in with the health fees into the tuition that students pay. Um, so I highly encourage you all to remind your students that these 
fees for these programs and the support that they're receiving through SHCS have already been paid for. So if they're feeling like they need it, please encourage them and help encourage them to come and get taken care of here. I'll go into a lot more detail in a bit about what the services we do offer. Um, but as far as that confidential piece, we are a health center, just like if we were going to Kaiser or Scripps or Sharp, um, if you are local, where we are bound by HIPAA. So there's certain things that we have to report. So um, any safety concerns, um, safety of others, and then um, abuse. So whether that be child, uh, dependent adult or elder abuse. Anything outside of that is confidential. And so hopefully at some point in your um, meetings with Jay, they'll go over what FERPA is and, and HIPAA, but we fall under that medical model with HIPAA. Um, so we can, I can definitely ask any questions um, at the end if you have any questions about this slide. Go ahead, Jay. So this is just kind of a rundown of the, the services that we have at Student Health and Counseling. So we do the general health, right? Common colds, the flu, we, we see COVID, uh, sexual and reproductive health. So whether that be gynecological exams, talking about contraception, um, STI testing and screenings. We do have laboratory services, and that is usually at either no cost or very low cost to students, depending on what the lab order is. Um, and these would be ordered from our medical providers at Student Health and Counseling. So it's not um, home doctor sending in a lab, but more of your student being seen in our center. We do have a pharmacy. I highlight this at our new student orientation because we also have over-the-counter medications that tend to be um, a lot cheaper than going over to the grocery store or going over to CVS. Um, I always kind of remind students about chapstick and we've got the, probably the cheapest chapstick on campus. Um, we've got counseling services and psychiatry. So we have um, LMFTs, LCSWs, and psychologists. And then we have one psychiatrist on staff. Um, advocacy, clinical case management, and health education. So lots of outreach, lots of support for students, lots of really trying to get students to be engaged and um, kind of show our faces so that students know how and when to access us. All right, Jay. So as far as the medical services go, we're not a, a hospital. We're not set up as like an emergency room, but we can handle that preventive care, whether it be acute care, um, maybe something got sprained or hurt and we need to stabilize it until they can get additional care, um, routine screenings when things just like maybe aren't feeling right. Um, as I mentioned, like the common cold, um, strep throat, right? So being able to come in and get assessed by a medical provider. Um, we do partner with our athletics department. So unfortunately, we do see sports-related injuries, sprained ankles, um, immunization. So if your student needs to do an internship, maybe they need to do a TB test, they can get that done um, through students student health and counseling. Next slide. So our confidential advocacy services, this one is even more on the confidential side than just us in HIPAA with um, medical and protected health information. This is also, this extends to anything related to like assault, sexual violence um, on our campus. So different departments around campus have different requirements for mandated reporting and what needs to be disclosed to the campus. Our confidential advocates 
are confidential. So they are able to work with students to understand what resources they have, um, whether they want to report or not, helping them get connected to local area resources or our UPD on campus or police department. This can also look like academic advocacy. So Donna talked about doing that on like Cougar Care Network side, um, but our confidential advocates can also help students like navigate um, the academic related side of things after uh, an event or a traumatic event. Um, so we have them here, they have a whole separate phone number um, and they do a lot of programming with our um, Hope and Wellness Center. They are also the ones that can do alternatives to the mandatory not anymore training, which is like a sexual violence awareness, how to stop bystander intervention. Um, so if there's any concerns of that, they are an amazing team to really help and support our students. Go ahead, Jay. So Hope and Wellness, I did talk about them a little bit. They do a lot of our um, out and about in the quad areas, in the open areas during U hour to really get student engagement um, around topics about mental health, physical health, um, nutrition. They are very active with giveaways. Uh, I know last year it was a bunch of instant pots, in Insta pots. Um, and blenders and things that students could use in their dorms or in their apartments. Um, lots of outreach about like alcohol awareness, um, substance use, sexual health, sexual violence, uh, bystander interventions. This is also um, an area in our department where students can also be interns. They can be certified peer educators. So depending on what students want to do um, as they go through their college experience, this could be a really awesome opportunity to get involved, to learn more of like the behind the scenes, community organizing, um, lots of lots of uh, like after evening hour type presentations and outreaches. So it's a really great thing to uh, get people connected to if they're interested in this type of work. All right, so mental health services at Cal State San Marcos, we offer the clinical case management piece that is my role here with our center. So I work with the medical side as well as our counselors just to kind of help connect students. And I think I have a slide on that a little bit later, uh, but we offer workshops, our coping skill series. We have individual counseling. We do also offer couples counseling. Um, the only caveat to that is both parts of the couple um, need to be students here at Cal State San Marcos. Um, but then we also offer some group counseling. So our coping skill series, um, these are really easy to get into. We offer them all throughout the semester, several times throughout the semester. And they're really bite-sized um, opportunities to get some coping skills under our students' belts. So they meet three times for 50 minutes long. Um, this is just kind of a preview of what each coping skill series is about. Some are focused on anxiety, depression, maybe just an overview of mental health in general. Um, as I was typing this out, a lot of it has to do with emotional regulation. And so learning how to create a that stress tolerant lifestyle to live with all the emotions that we have, um, emotional regulation, like flexibility in our thinking. That's really what we focus on with these coping skill series. So maybe a student isn't totally ready to do therapy. They're kind of apprehensive. This is a great thing to start because it's set up more of a, a more of like a lecture. It's a manualized thing. We do a lot more talking. They do a lot more thinking, being able to reflect back on their life or maybe what they are doing now or what they could be doing differently. Next slide. So this is all the groups that we are currently offering this semester. So I will not run 
through them, but we definitely have groups that are geared um, towards certain um, ages. So we've got our like academic support group and for the students that are just like needing a little bit extra, we have our first year support group because the transition here can be difficult. And sometimes we need a little bit of that support. We need to hear from other peers and people that maybe they're going through something similar, the homesickness, um, it does happen. And so this is a great group to bring our students together and offer that support. Um, we do also have um, certain groups for different cultural backgrounds if people can build community. Um, but I'll just, that's a huge list and it's online if you want to read more, but just a little rundown of the groups that we are offering this semester. Was there, was that the next one, Jay? Yes. Okay. Um, so a reason, you know, a person might seek counseling, so worried about maybe their habits, maybe they've had an increase of substance use, um, feeling down or sad, right, for a prolonged period of time, something that's just, they haven't yet, haven't felt before. Um, maybe you're hearing, you know, your students being worried or really nervous or stressed, Um Sometimes two things come up from our past. So we have seen and heard from students that are in a psychology class, um, you know, learning the course and learning the material and something really activates them and they have a, a painful memory. Um, it could be mood changes, right? Really high highs, really low lows. Um, it can also be just like to check in about life situations, about the transition from high school to college, from living with you all to now living on your own. Um, and we also see students who are concerned about their eating habits. And so these might be things that maybe you hear from your students or you've got concerns with. And so just a little bit of a list for you to keep an ear out, keep an eye out, and just as Donna mentioned earlier, is to help your students remember the resources that are on campus. So stress, sadness, and anxiety is definitely a part of life, right? We talked about that kind of emotional regulation. How do we live with all these emotions? Um, this is something that we really work with our students on. I think COVID has definitely impacted a little bit of this, but stress is, a little bit of stress is okay. We That kind of helps us get things done. And so really reteaching and learning how to regulate our stress, understand and recognize like what stress is actually doing for us. Um, but when there is excessive stress or depression or feeling really overwhelmed um, and not starting to interfere with uh, daily living, uh, maybe getting up and going to class, as Donna was mentioning, it could be a sign of a mental health challenge. And so um, we definitely have the resources and, and the support on campus to be able to help your student. Also, you know, if you have insurance and you're able to get them connected off campus, that's something um, that we can talk about and we can help support as well. Um, students don't have to seek our services as long as they're seeking services somewhere. Um, and we just, we really want to engage that in the practices and help students enjoy um, and do the things that really promote their overall health and well-being. And so when we talked about um, our health promotions folks, that's really what they're honing in on is making sure that students know that we're here, we're active out during you hour and to just kind of help support our students. Go ahead, Jay. This picture makes me laugh every time I see it because it looks like I'm about to sell somebody a house. Um, it looks like a real estate ad on, you know, on the corner of somebody's mailbox. 
Um, but I am the clinical case manager. So I am a small, mighty team of one. And sometimes I have amazing MSW interns from our school and from San Diego State to kind of help support um, our clinical case management. But really, the my, my role and my purpose is to help students connect to services either on and off campus. Um, so definitely have a very strong relationship with Donna, um, housing, uh, our friends over at DSS and Disability Support Services. So this is just kind of a nutshell and it, it may, uh, oftentimes mirrors a lot of what Donna does. Um, but we're definitely in two different houses and doing two different things. And there's usually a mental health kind of component to the work that I do with the students. Um, but as I mentioned, referrals off campus, that's something that we see. Um, we we do have a small, you know, a small center. And so there's times where we are impacted. And so helping students be able to reach out and get access wherever they can is definitely something that I'm really passionate about and helping with them. Um, health insurance, that's something that we're seeing a lot. So definitely start the conversation early um, about how to use health insurance. Oftentimes, i guilty of it too. I mean, my mom handled everything. My parents did it all. Um, and so not really recognizing like what it is, how to use it, where to go. So those are all really great and important conversations to definitely start having. All right, Donna did touch on the Health Assistance Fund. We are very, very proud of this fund. Um, this fund came out, out of a abundance of love and care and compassion and a desire to help students meet their wellness needs. So recognizing that if a student doesn't have glasses or they can't see the board or they're struggling with transportation to get to medical appointments, they're struggling with money to pay for co-pays, that that's going to negatively impact their success as, as being a student. And so this health assistance fund is set up to address the mental health, maybe physical health, and just overall well-being for students. Um, we can cover things such as co-pays for psychological testing, maybe in individual therapy, um, psychiatric services, medication, either prescription or over the counter. We've seen a lot of wisdom teeth extraction. So our young people are definitely at that age where you know, they got to get those wisdom teeth out and it's expensive. Um, we definitely see a lot of need for optometry. Glasses are not cheap. Um, so definitely this is a fund that we are very proud that we're able to offer. And just a little bit of bragging points here is that we are the only the only CSU um, in the system that has a fund set up specifically for our students medical, mental health, and overall wellness. All right, Jay. So Donna touched on these, but ASI Cougar Pantry um, food. I love our Cougar Pantry. It's set up in a very um, humane, very strengths-based perspective where it's a little mini grocery store. So these are some pictures from there. Students can go in and pick what it is that they need. So they're not just given a box of food that maybe they can't eat due to dietary restrictions or preferences. And so it's very, it feels very um, warm in there. Um, it's just a very sweet space. And then as Donna mentioned, Cougar Care Network. So definitely encouraging you all and your students to reach out to Cougar Care when they are in need. Um, Cougar Care tends to be the catch-all for all the questions or the random things that may happen. Um, yeah, Cougar Care sees it all, does it all. And, you know, I think they make a wonderful team over there in conjunction with a lot of support on campus too. All right, Jay. 
So I know Donna mentioned, you know, after hours resources, um, our center, Student Health and Counseling, does contract with a 24-hour line. So students have access 24-7 um, to reach a live counselor who is still connected to our university. And so they can do it by calling just our general number, hitting option two. If there's needs that come up and um, maybe the student needs to be hospitalized, they can get into contact with our police department on campus and help facilitate any of those needs. So it's an amazing service that we have so grateful that we have it and grateful that we have it for 24-7. Um, but just, you know, a reminder, 911-988 is the new suicide and crisis lifeline number. So students can call that without needing to call like the San Diego Access and Crisis Line. Um, but we also work with Center for Community Solutions. We've got the LGBT Q plus suicide hotline as well. And all of these resources and more can be found on our website. So self-care plan, start having the conversation with your students. And for you, I mean, it's all going to be such a transition, um, but creating a manageable plan, right? Start the conversation, protecting and practicing that self-compassion and that resilience. So really being able to have something happen and be able to bounce back. Um, or have something happen and have it not impact us so much because we are taking care of ourselves because we have that resiliency. Um, so just thinking about the specific activities that maybe your students like to do, help them think about what they have um, historically liked to do, maybe listen to music, journal, um, going for a run, helping them identify people that they can trust and that they can talk to. Um, we can definitely be one of those resources that you help um, plug and share with them. Um, and then that last one, who can I reach out to if I need more help? So what are those local resources um, when they're feeling sad or overwhelmed? Who is that you know professional that they can turn to? So just a nice reminder for us all to really be starting to think about our self-care and how we how we take care of ourselves and develop that self-compassion. So little connect with us slide. I love that we like have the phone, Donna. I think it's so cute. Um, follow us on Instagram. Like I mentioned, there's always like giveaways. There's like fun things that happen, um, information updates about our center. Um, our handle there is at CSUSM hope. Um, but I think that's my last slide. So thank you all. And I guess we'll now open it up for questions, Jay, or have a discussion. Yes, so let me stop the recording.